In literal sense, Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7, Jesus himself gave various teachings. He taught on the Beatitudes. He also taught on what we have actually just gone through now. He taught on prayer. He taught on fasting. He taught on giving of alms. And he also taught on other issues to do with in terms of pursuing the kingdom of God. So the three of these chapters major on what we consider as the teachings of Jesus. Immediately after that, we now begin to look at what we call parables that Jesus was able to teach. But the actual teachings he gave from Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Are you hearing me? In verse number 13 and verse number 14 and 15 and 16, there are two things that Jesus speaks about. He talks about salt of the earth and then he also talks about the light of the world. Salt related to the earth because the earth is where we proceeded from. So God has an interest of influencing everything that has a source. In other words, God doesn't just look at us from where we are, but God also considers our background. He knows that the source of everything determines what, uh, what, what the future will be like. If we have a good source, we produce good results. If we have a bad source, we produce bad results. So he says that we are the salt of the earth. But he goes ahead to say that we are the light of the world. The word world there simply speaks of systems. So he's saying not only has God given us the power to influence sources, but God has also given us the power to also affect systems. In Daniel chapter number 1 from verse number 8, the Bible says, I, Daniel, determined within myself not to eat the food of the Chaldeans. Now, I made this teaching some time ago and I was explaining to people. When I made a study, I was trying to ask myself the question, why did Daniel refuse to eat that food? Is there anywhere in scripture that the food of the Chaldeans was refused? There is nowhere. But if you study it well enough, you will discover Daniel was exercising what we consider as the practice of the Nazarite. All right? The Nazarite never drank wine. The Nazarite never shaved their hair. In their particular meals, the Nazarites never ate. So, Daniel knew that if I go ahead and practice the principle of the Nazarite, I will automatically rise above all the rest because we are what we eat. I said again, we are what we eat and we produce everything that we eat. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So Daniel had this understanding. So if you look at Daniel's life in the kingdom of uh, Babylon, he ended up becoming an influencer. In chapter number 1 all the way to chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, Daniel rises as a man that influences an entire kingdom. Later on we observe another person comes and takes over the kingdom. This is Dairus in chapter number 9 and chapter, I mean Cyrus rather, in chapter 9, chapter, yes, Dairus in chapter 7, chapter 6 and chapter 7, we notice that the king Dairus rises into position. So due during the tenure of Dairus, still Daniel stays an influencer. Later on in chapter number 9 and chapter 10, we notice another king rises called Cyrus. Still when he becomes a leader, Daniel is still an influencer. So out of the kings, four of them in number, the first one was Nebuchadnezzar, the second one was known as Belshazzar, the third one was Dairus, and the fourth one was known as Cyrus. The four of them, Daniel influenced all of them. Now Daniel understood that when you become a believer or a covenant person, one of the callings we have been given is to influence environments oh come on give me a louder amen if you cannot be felt where you are there's something wrong with you so jesus says it very well that you are the salt of the earth salt is what creates savor whenever salt is made available then there is test my wife cooked for us very nice chicken yesterday it is good to give testimony amen praise the lord and when she cooked it for us when she served it when we began to eat the first thing i looked for when i stretched out my hand was for salt now the chicken was well cooked but without salt there was no test are you hearing what I'm trying to say? Now you just say amen so that, uh, amen, glory to God. Are you hearing me? So, but the issue that I'm saying, salt is what brings taste. So in other words, if the church comes out of the world, there is no taste in the world. Look at every politician. Every time they will stand up, they will quote the Bible because Jesus was an influencer. They usually say historically, whenever you look at Mahatma Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi said he went through the Bible, particularly the Gospels. He looked at the life of Jesus and admired everything about Jesus. He said his parables, his way of speech, his quotations, and the way he dealt with challenges made him discover that Jesus was not just a preacher. He was also political by nature. Now, how do we know that? Because he influenced even how Herod was responding at that time. He said that alone made him think of becoming a Christian until he met one. He said the moment he met a Christian, he changed his mind. He said the two of them are very different. <laughs> are you hearing me? He said when he looked at a mere Christian and looked at Jesus, the two of them were very different. So the question was this. How comes a Christian is different and yet we are called after Jesus? If you study your Bible, in the first time we observe the word Christian appear, it was in Antioch. And the Bible records very well, if you go do Bible history rather, that they had taken a period of roughly about one year to study the lives of these people. They were looking at them, their mannerisms, their habits. And that is when they coined the name Christians because they called him after their source. After their leader, after their head. And so I'm praying for somebody here 
that your life will speak everywhere you go. Oh, come on, shout aloud, amen. Then he says, ye are the light of the one. I need to make a statement here before I will begin to point out these laws and then we will deal with them. The question I have for you is this. We have always known, even scripturally, the Bible says that they like darkness because they do things that no one can see. We are only in agreement over that. But let me ask you a question. Do all of you, if today the lights went off and it was completely dark outside, including even the entire building, if the light went, went off right here, would you guys be comfortable? Why? So when Jesus is saying you are the light of the world, Jesus knows in as much as they like what they are doing, that the truth is that they are uncomfortable. So when you look at the politicians and everything they are doing, if you look at life generally on a perspective, I'm just making an introduction here, you will come to discover that all of creation is really hungry. It is eagerly waiting for true light to appear. Oh, come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Watch me very well. People are praying that the right politicians should rise. And the reason they are praying like that is because they know they are living in darkness. No one is sure if somebody takes into leadership what will happen next. No one is very certain. Everyone is worried. Will I be affected? Will my tribe be affected? The reason why we are all saying so is because we are living in darkness. So literally speaking, no human being likes darkness. They may like what they do in secret, but they do not like darkness. Because when you are in darkness, you are uncertain of your future. When you are in darkness, you feel cold and insecure. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? So when Jesus is speaking here, he says that you are the light of the world. Jesus knows very well that unless you begin to light up, people will never find direction. And there are guys who are waiting for you to rise as an influencer. There are people who are praying that you will become an answer to them. Pastor Ken was about to fly to South Africa in 1999. That's my director. He was here last week and he was a blessing to us. And before he flew, we were doing an overnight prayer. And I remember that time I just joined full-time ministry and we were praying together. So prophecies began to come up. One of the words that was given to him, and I remember I specifically said, I said, God is telling me, it was a very strange prophecy, that there are people who have been praying for your arrival. And when you will arrive, God says you will meet them. And the sign to show that this prophecy is true is that they will meet you and tell you, we have been praying and waiting for you. When we saw you, we said you are the one. Pastor Ken arrived in South Africa, stayed in a particular church for two weeks. When he began to go ahead and to begin to do the ministry, that four guys came to him. These four guys met him and they saw him and they told him, Sir, we have actually been praying for you. We have never met you, but we actually saw you in a vision. And you are the one we have been praying for. Those guys created a hall for Pastor Ken. They gave him a hall where he began to do his first meeting. They provided instruments for him. Pastor Ken did a particular meeting where a blind eyes, I mean a, a person who was blind, the eyes were open wide open because God prepared people in advance there are guys who are waiting for you to arrive where you're supposed to and that is one reason why your light cannot be hidden and your saltness cannot lose its savor there has to be something about you in your bloodline in your family why God put you there why God put you in the church you're in why God gave you the wife he did why God gave you the children he did and why God planted you in a dorage God knew you carry a solution for people so there must be a choice. I will be an influencer. Tap your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I am rising up as one. I pray for most of you that you will be felt in this life. You will not finish life without making a mark and an impact. Bishop T.D. Jakes made a statement that I like. He said the mother spoke to him. And the mother told him, never allow yourself to live and die without making a mark on this earth. He said that statement is what drove him to become what he is today. If you live life generally, like I'm one of those people amongst the number, you don't understand Christianity. Christianity is not one amongst the number. Christianity makes a mark. When you are born again, something about you speaks. Oh no, your amen is going quiet. Something about you makes an impact. Your life makes an impact. People look at the way you're living righteous, they always testify. You know, I gave you the story of one man that went to, uh, to drink beer with his friends. You remember the story? And while he went to drink beer... The friends began to give stories about people like Kanyari, all the drunkards. I mean, we're talking about how Christians are messing up Christianity. And they said, Akuna wakofu squeeze. In the process of saying that this other drunk man looked at them and he said, Kunayo. He said, wakamambi akuna, wakamambi akunayo. Kama mnataka kuna wakofu kujeni kwangu. Kuna wakofu. Wakofu ni nani ni mke wake. Si hati jina hake likuwa na ito wakofu. Are you understanding me? I think it is good you're called wakofu. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be called after what you behave like. I told you the story of the brother who does mechanical work back in Nairobi. He's called Ezekiel. He used to be a guy who used to steal. Ezekiel would work together with some people whenever they were stealing vehicles. They would bring a vehicle. He's a mechanic. In less than 10 minutes, they would remove the engine of the car and sell it. 
10 minutes record time they would clear the engine removed and sell it so by the time you're actually using this gps or tracker to locate your car you're getting a shell engine disappeared <laughs> okay you'll get it tomorrow some of you still don't even get it i pray for you for border border may god upgrade are you hearing me what I'm bringing into play, Ezekiel got born again to an extent where they gave him a name, Duku. If you go to that mechanical place, anytime you're looking for Ezekiel, if you say Ezekiel, people don't know Ezekiel. But if you say Ndugu, they know Ndugu. So this guy is saying, Kama mjaona okofu, kujeni kwangu, mtaona? I wonder what people will say about you. Look at your neighbor, ask your neighbor, which one will they talk about? Law number one, I want to quote them quickly, we will be looking at them with time. The law of vision. The first thing that makes you an influencer is the ability or the quality rather of vision that you possess. In Proverbs 29 and verse number 18, the Bible says, where there is no vision, a people perish. So that means vision influences people. Are you all in agreement over that? In Habakkuk chapter number 2 and verse number 1, the Bible says in verse number 1, I will wait to see, to hear what he will say. And then the Bible goes ahead to say in verse number 2, that the Lord said unto me, write down the vision and make it plain. Listen to this, that whosoever may read it may run with it. So that means there are people who are ready to run with your vision. God is always given people the power of vision to become influencers. If you ever ask people, what is your vision? If people give you an answer to be a millionaire, they do not understand vision. What is your vision to get married? They do not understand vision. Vision is what you will do in between what you want to become. So, for example, if I want to be a millionaire, vision defines the millionaire I should be. Because there are many millionaires on the face of the earth. But what makes me different is a vision that brings my purpose into play. So the first way you become an influencer is through the first law. You must understand the law of vision. Remember, the quality of vision you have determines the quality of people you will attract. In life, if you have small dreams, you attract small men. If your dream grows bigger, automatically you influence the right people. In Proverbs 29, 22 rather, in verse number 29. Proverbs 22 and verse number 29. The Bible says, have you seen a man that excels? A man that is diligent in his work. He will not dine with mere men, ordinary men. He will dine with kings so i look at people here today and i ask you the question which level do you want to live in do you want to influence mere men or do you want to influence kings if i were you my choice is clear i want god to raise my bar not from mere men only but into a level of influencing kings oh come on you can give me a louder amen, amen. isaiah chapter number 60 and verse number one arise and come on make it louder arise and for what thy light has so that means when you have light, when you have vision, you have the power to rise. Where there is no vision, there is no influence. People follow you because you have what they need to take them to the next level. They don't follow you because you are gifted. Listen to me very well. They don't follow you because you are anointed. Anointing can die. Ask Samson, he will give you the answer. Samson was heavily anointed. But when the Philistines went against him, they were not just targeting the anointing. The anointing they stopped. But they targeted something harder. They were looking for the eyes of Samson. They knew if we remove his vision, we have stopped his future. If you read the Bible, the hair grew back again. Your anointing can revive. But if your vision is not clear, you are dead. If the guy's eyes were clear and the hair came back, it was sure he would not have died with the enemies. He wouldn't have said, now put me here and let me die with them. No! Common sense would have told him you can see them so clear. Each one, 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 arakaraka. Are you hearing me? Or you will bring down the building, bring it quickly when you have seen the door that is there. Are you hearing me? So, nangusha lafu natoka and do that. So, what I'm just bringing into play. No, I'm just trying to explain something. You need to understand vision makes you an influencer. I look at many people, even if you were to ask them, where would you be in the next 10 years? They have no idea. People have no plan, no thought, no vision concerning their destiny. You cannot become an influencer. Listen, you live in the pack of many, in the class of many, in the place of multitudes, if you do not see what others do not see. If all you see maintains you on the same level. Why did God choose Saul? 1 Samuel chapter 9. Why? The Bible says he was a shoulder higher. So that means he could see what others couldn't see. Before lions attack a giraffe, the defense mechanism of a giraffe, number one, is vision. A giraffe sees at a distance. So it knows this enemy is about to appear. But all the rest of them are on a lower level. May God change your status. Hey, I command your vision to open up today. Slap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, vision shall be restored. Number two, the law of a hiding. The law of a hiding. Could you feature? The law of hiding. The second law that makes people become influencers is when they understand the power of being hidden. 
Many guys like manifestation, but let me tell you, the secret of breakthrough and longevity in breakthrough is not manifestation. It is how you know how to hide yourself that gives you power to manifest and to be sustained in manifestation. I read a quote from a man who is now late, who taught a lot on manhood. His name was called Ed Cole. Ed Cole wrote, wrote a statement. He said, fame comes for a moment, but greatness comes with longevity. I looked at that statement. I said to myself, then I refuse to be famous, but I choose to be great. There is a difference between the two. For 25 years, God was working on Abraham. The day God manifested Abraham, today we are all the children of Abraham. Luke chapter number 1 and verse number 80. Luke 1 and verse 80, the Bible says that the man who was known as John the Baptist was in the wilderness until his day of manifestation to Israel. Many people are in a hurry to come forth. And God says, I am hiding you. Relax. I know you want to manifest. I know you want the world to know who you are. But there are moments God is just hiding you. Keeping you in preparation. Now, there are two reasons why. And I will explain, though I will deal with them later. The first one is that he hides you to develop you. So even when you struggle to come out, that struggle is a development orientation. Every time you're struggling, breakthrough, and then you thought you were almost about to arrive, it is not a curse that you felt you went back. No, don't call it a demon. It is God. There are some things which is God, because demons are weaker than God. God said, whatsoever you bind, I will. Are you guys are looking at me with strange faces. Please smile at me, say amen. Now let me ask you a question. God said, whatsoever you, I will. So God is clear. He has already written his word. So that means he gave you authority. Demons cannot handle you. Isn't that so? No, look at the way you're saying amen. No, give me a louder one. So demons cannot handle you. So why are you binding and it is refusing? Because it is God. It is not a devil. A devil is weak. No, let's be in agreement. A devil is weak. There are moments you will bind. And you are binding something that is amiss. God is the one that has kept you there. Your Kimbelembele is trying to push. But God says, Kijana. To me, Kiana, Kiana, relax. Kiana. God himself is holding you right there. So God knows if you are to come out too early, you will die or fizzle out quickly. But God keeps you there for a season and a reason. But number two, God gives you the law of hiding because he wants to teach you that after manifestation, he will no longer do it for you. You have to have learned the principle yourself. Everyone wants to have preaching opportunities. Like myself, isn't that so? Open doors. Bring me 1,000, 1 million people. Let me tell you, preaching to 1 million people is not preaching to 10 people. These are 1 million people with different demons. Are you understanding me? You think I'm not... De I'm dealing with demons here. Demons of sleep. Demons of stubbornness. Demons of unbelief. They are here. Yes. Every one of us struggles with something. So I'm working on something here. You think... you be We are not motivational speakers. A motivational speaker does not need to pray before he starts. If we don't pray... There is a first mission I did in the river. And I remember, Pastor Gideon, Pastor Jeremiah, I can tell you, I gave you them the story. When we landed there, we were ready to go and preach until the pastor started giving us a story. He told us here, there was a crusade that was done. When the crusade was done, the preacher stood up. He began to preach. He said, in the name of Jesus, I cast out every witchcraft. He said, a witch doctor appeared and told him, if you keep on using that name, Mdomo itasonga kutoka hapa, yende uko. He said, akuna kitu kama yo. He said, in the name of Jesus, na mdomo ikanza kusonga. In the name of Jesus, Mdomo Ikasonga. Ilibidi jamaa meacha kubiri, akatoka. The next preacher that landed there, when he came to preach, this is what we were taught. As he was preaching, a harlot, prostitute, whore, came and just held his hand. And the brother left Jesus on the podium and married that woman. I'm telling you, after you hear such, you will not be in a hurry to preach. We were waking up at 5, going to pray till 7, come to take breakfast, go back at 9. Prayer until 2, go and eat lunch, come back from 3 all the way to 5 before the evening revival begins. You don't want somebody to hold your hand and you stay there. You are not ready to say in the name of Jesus and your mouth is moving. Sometimes success can be your greatest trap. There are people that are in a hurry to succeed and when they break through, they do not have the culture to hide themselves. So they waste all their energy in success. So they expire in a short while. Your business can be a trap. I've had people who say, me, I want business so that I can have time to serve God. Business can be a trap. You can begin business and not come to church. If you're not disciplined, you will not. You won't trust me. And that's why I look at people, I tell people, God gives you this law of hiding. Number one, himself, he does it. 
to train you. But number two, he does it also to teach you to learn how you can do it when you are above. So that when you succeed, you now have the habit. Look at Jesus. Jesus would preach, but the Bible says in the evening he would retreat. And stay in for prayer throughout the entire night. In the morning he would enter the synagogue, he would preach. In the evening he would hold the disciples and retreat. He wasn't visiting every Tom, Dick and Harry, eating supper, lunch, preaching. He wasn't doing that. He knew virtue left him. So as long as it came out, I have to retreat. It's like many of you here. The issue is you are growing tired every day because you don't rest. You don't know what it means to hide. You don't know what it means to rejuvenate. You are literally trapped in one level. For, for over three years, you are on the same spot. And not because the will of God is not settled over you. It is. But your energy levels have been down. If you just took three days to refresh, rejuvenate, be clear in your mind, you would get another fresh anointing and come out with a breakthrough. Yeah, your amen now is already coming louder, but I need a louder amen. If you will influence society, you must know what it means to be hidden. Enjoy hiding. Train yourself to hide. If you are here and you can wake up in the morning and you can't pray before you begin your day, you don't understand that law. You are crazy upstairs. You are mad. Insane. A mumu. A coconut head. You are a prayer item. How, how do you wake up in the morning? Uh, honestly speak. How do you wake up in the morning and you know you are a believer? I told you the other day, do you know there are people who are never tempted? Yes. And I knew the same response is like it is now. Because most of you are not there. Yes, yeah. Why should the devil tempt you and you know he, has, he knows he has you in the pocket? You are doing his will. You are continually stealing money. You are lying to everyone. You are moving around playing Kalongo. You are doing everything he expects. So should you be tempted? But Caleb, the day you have decided to follow Jesus... You have decided the day you made that decision. Satan now says, Hey, visit him. All demons, even mother in law demon, please go around him. Thwart that brother. Because it's a hope that these people have. Please give me an amen. So if I don't make a decision, Pastor Jeremiah, to go and rebuild, then I come out with the energy. I can't. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. But how long did it take before he was tempted? 40 days. After 40 days, that's when Satan tempted him. The Holy Ghost knew he's not to be tempted immediately. Let him pump himself with me. So if you really looked at Jesus, Jesus looked like this. Jesus was muscle. He was hungry physically. But internally he had capacity. So when the devil threw it, he threw it back. When he threw it, he threw it back. Jesus was so good at that. He was he knew he couldn't mess it. The Bible does not say, and he left hungry looking for food somewhere. All we read is that angels ministered to him and he went back to the city full of power and authority. Hide yourself. Hide yourself. And you will influence people like never before. If you are ever around people, they become familiar to you. But if you know how to hide, they will never understand you. Every time you come out, you are fresh. When they thought they knew yesterday, you come with something fresh. May God anoint you as you hide yourself. Father, today we agree in the name of Jesus that these laws that we have just begun to learn will become a part of our lives. I pray for everyone to become an influencer. Their names shall be heard. Their voices shall be heard. They will impact lives. They will impact destinies. No one who is listening to me today will remain the same again. Wherever they will go, witches will cry. Demons will be scattered. Powers around them will go away. Families will be delivered. I ask that the oil of God will be fresh upon your people. That whatever the enemy will try through the forces of darkness will bow down and be broken. And in the name of Jesus, I command you now to receive that grace. If you receive it, shout aloud, Amen. If you believe in it, give God a clap offering right now and appreciate the Lord. Rise up on your feet in the name of Jesus. Do you guys receive the word this afternoon?